Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about our little project I've been working on that I'm going to be using in demos for future content related to containers. And it's basically encapsulating DOS box in a container. Now I've used this in other demos in the past, but this is a kind of a newer version of this. This is probably my second iteration or third iteration of this particular idea. And this one, I wanted to take DOS box and also add sound to it because my previous iterations didn't have sound capabilities. So I went the extra mile a little bit and just tried to figure out how can I get sound streaming back to a browser as well as the content from the frame buffers and the output from a visual application so that I can play games in a browser, but the actual game is running on a container, wherever that container might be hosted. So I'm going to walk through the stack and then I'm going to demo this with Commander Keen. It's one of my old favorite games from when I was a kid. So let's take a look at this and just see how it all works together. So this is going to be DOSBox in a container, which is pretty straightforward in concept, but so we're gonna be working with a browser client and obviously a Docker container. And at the bottom of that container, we're gonna have DOSBox. Now, in a ideal world, I probably would not have everything in a single container. I'd probably break it out into multiple containers, but I'm using this mostly for demos and for something to play with. So there's gonna be a lot of stuff in a single container in this particular example. So my first iteration of this had a stack that was basically there to take the output from DOS box, what it writes back to X11 and serve that up to a browser client, basically as a stream of data. And that particular stack was what I have in my old version. And it looks something like this, where we have X virtual frame buffer. So that's gonna be using X11 server. And instead of using a graphics card, it's gonna be using a virtual frame buffer, or basically a virtual video card that it's gonna be writing the results to. And then what hooks into that is a VNC server, which in this case, I'm using tight VNC, but any of them would work. I'm just using tight VNC because I like the encapsulation for it. It's very compact and it's also very fast. So tight VNC takes the output from virtual frame buffer encapsulating the VNC protocol. And then there's an app called WebSoxify that can take any TCP stream and basically wrap it up in a web socket. And then that allows a browser to consume it. And then for the web server component of the video stack, I'm using something called NoVNC. And NoVNC is basically just a VNC implementation that runs in a browser and it uses WebSockets. That's why we have to have WebSoxify around a tight VNC. And it also serves up the static content. So all the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are also served up by NoVNC. Now the audio stack follows a similar pattern. It's not nearly as tall, but we still have output from DOSBox. So DOSBox is gonna write that out to the native uh, libraries that are available in the Linux context. And then Pulse Audio is just an audio source or rather an audio suite of tools that can receive that stream of audio. And it's just basically there to encapsulate that. And it can also write it out to a sound card and it can manage that in a lot of different ways. It can record it to uh, files and it can also write it out to the next component, which is GStreamer. Now, GStreamer is typically used in the context of streaming something like a video or streaming audio, but you can encapsulate it and use it for just audio if you want to. In this case, I'm going to be capturing the output from Pulse Audio and encapsulating it with GStreamer. And it uh, does transcoding so that you can put it into a, a format that a browser can understand. Now, that alone is not enough, so we still have to put WebSoxify on top of it so that we can consume that uh, uh, through a WebSocket. And so basically my browser is going to need two different streams. It's gonna to need to stream for the video and a stream for the audio, and it's gotta consume them through, through two independent channels. So rather than expose two uh, different ports for each of these. I, I wanted to have a single port for this particular application. I wanted it all to run over port 80. And so to accomplish that, I proxied both of these stacks using Nginx. So I just put a little lightweight Nginx uh, reverse proxy in play. And based on the URL mapping, it will either go to the audio stack or to the video stack. And then the browser will then connect to Nginx. And then based on the, the route, it will either stream the audio or stream the video back to the browser client. Now the browser client, of course, is using uh, the no VNC uh, client for the video, and it's using some custom code uh, for the audio stream as well. But this stack works fairly well, and I I've tried it, and it seems to work fairly well. There's a little bit of asynchronality to uh, the video and audio stream when they're coming in together, but it's uh, not that noticeable depending on what you're doing. So I'm uh, going to just demo this as is to show you how it works. But before we do that, I do want to look at the Docker file. The Docker file is not exactly intuitive. You couldn't 
deduce that I'm doing this from the Docker file alone, but I do want to look at it just to show you kind of where everything is. So if you're interested in this, you could go into the Docker file and change it and add your uh, components or make it better, improve it, and then submit me a pull request and I'll gladly incorporate it into the main channel of this particular repo on GitHub. So this is the repo for my Docker file. And then there's also supporting config files for everything else in this particular repo. The Docker file is really the meat and potatoes of the whole thing. And you can look through this if you want, but it's based on Ubuntu 22.04. And this is setting up environment variables, not only for the execution of app get, but it's also setting the password for type VNC. If you want to use a different password, you can do that on the command line whenever you start the container, or you can just change it in your uh, build file, and then it will uh, build a new container with a different password. Now, of course, I wouldn't do this for a production-oriented app for, for demos. This is probably fine. Now, this is doing a non-interactive installation. That is what we're going to be using to install all the components using apt-get. And so this is going to call apt-get. It's going to set some things that apt-get needs for the time zone inf information. And from that, uh, it will have a non-interactive install. So it won't have like prompts and things with that uh, set up. Now apt-get ins ins will install all these components. You can see a lot of these are the things that we mentioned when we looked at the stack. So like no VNC pulse audio, uh, we have supervisor, which we'll look at in a minute. Then it's using type VNC uh, and DOS box rat poison is just a lightweight desktop environment that provides some context for uh, DOS box use. This is copying in some of the config files. This is setting up the audio dependencies inside of the UI. This is setting up DOS box to run right here and also wiring up all the stuff for uh, WebSoxify for type VNC to use that, add no VNC and so on. And then finally we copy in our game. I'm using Commander Keen. You could use Wolfenstein 3D. You could use any game that will run on DOS box and just copy it up into the DOS folder right there. You can replace my Commander Keen with any DOS game or multiple DOS games if you so choose. And then that will then allow you to run those once this thing loads. This is using supervisor instead of just trying to bootstrap everything on the command line. There was just a lot of components that needed to be loaded. So I, I switched over to supervisor to bootstrap a lot of that. Supervisor is just a, a convenient way to load up a lot of different components, especially when you have more than three or four. Doing that on a single line can get a, a rather arduous. So supervisor just provides a neat and clean way to uh, set up various things uh, like VNC, and then you can do WebSoxify, audio stream, uh, Nginx and so on, because there's so much stuff that's loading. It just made a lot more sense to do it this way. So that's the code for this that loads it. So let's go ahead and load this guy up in a environment that I can use to play some games on. So I've got a virtual machine running in my local context here. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you that I have everything pulled from the repo. And this is what it looks like on the console right here. Easy to build. So you can just run Docker build. Um, you can change the game. I'm using Game Manor Keen, obviously, but I'm, you can change the game. So you can uh, call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it Keen Build and um, then build the local Docker file. And that's just going to build everything. I've already built this, so it's basically just retagging it. But it takes about two to three minutes to build, depending on your internet connection. It's got a lot of app dependencies to install. But once it's done, you can then run it. You just do Docker run. You want to do a port forward. Um, you want to port forward port 80 to port 80 or whatever external port right here. You could do 8080 or whatever you might need to the internal port on port 80. And that's the only port forward you need. And then you can then use uh, your container name. I'm gonna call it King build. And that's all you need to run it. Now, if you want to use some other um, name for your container, you can of course do that. Um, I'm just using King build for mine. And once you have that, then we're gonna load this guy up inside of a browser. And um, to do that, I'm just going to point this to HTTP. I'm not, there's no SSL on this. And I'm going to point it to the IP of my virtual machine, which is uh, uh, 10.0.1.92 on my local network here. And then I'm going to launch vnc.html. And um, that's going to launch this new VNC client. I connect, I'm going to put in that password that was in the Docker file. And now this is bringing up doc, uh, my DOS box instance right here. I can scroll down to get a little bit uh, more in con view here, and I can enlarge that too um, by enlarging the screen here. And then I can install my game and um, install Commander Keen. And installing Commander Keen only takes a few seconds. It actually takes longer to load it than it does to install it. Um, now that wasn't previously true when you were installing this game back in 1990. Uh, so this game is 33 years old now. 
Uh, but in any case, I played this when I was like in third and fourth grade when I was back in grade school. And I thought it was cool because it was probably the closest thing that PC guys like me had to what the cool kids had, which was like NES. Uh, and they were playing Mario and so on. So we played Commander Keen and other games like it on the PC. In any case, this now has the ability to use sound. So I'm going to turn up the volume on my thing. And you should hear the sound coming through. And now I can play the game and enjoy not only the a, the 16-bit graphics, rather, because this was on a 286, I can enjoy the uh, sound, the PC speaker sound that this game had. And of course, if you wanted to have a different game that had something like Sound Blaster, that would work too. But uh, this one has the squeaky, squawky sounds of a PC speaker that make it just that much more nostalgic and that much funner to play. So you can see that I died there. But in any case, a very fun game and a very fun demo in any case. So hopefully you've enjoyed this demo of DOSBox in the container. Now, of course, there are better ways to run this. You could, of course, run it in a local context. You can download DOSBox for Windows, Mac, or Linux and play games locally. You can even run it on Android or iPhone, I think, and play DOS games in a portable way. So there are a lot of ways you can run DOSBox. I just did it for a container because it makes for a better demo than just pulling up a Hello World-like container and saying, hey, look, my container's running. I like to do this one just because it has a little bit more of a whiz-bang approach approach for demoing things when you're running them in containers. But in any case, hopefully you can use it for your demos or you can just tweak the code and use it for whatever you want to use it for. You could run desktop apps with sound now in a container and there's a lot of other things you could do with it. I'm just using it for uh, DOS games in a container so I can run different demos on the various things that I will be doing content for on Azure, particularly around containers. So I'll be looking at things like container instances and AKS and uh, container apps and so on on Azure that all use containers. So I'll be uh, using this particular container again. So look for those videos in the future. If you like this content, as always, subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it with your friends. Let me know what you think in the video description down below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at The One Mule. And as always, thanks for watching.